Leadership is humility. It is knowing the time and the place to speak, to step in, to step out, and to listen. Leadership is not about the spotlight. Instead of showing or standing before you in person, I'm going to show you through pictures and words my personal vision of leadership. Pay attention. You are getting ready to join hundreds of students before you who found their vision and created videos. So pay attention and be thinking of what you have to say. Stand up right now if you have ever performed a Michael Jackson song at a school function. Seriously, have you? Don't be shy to admit it. Does this sound scary because I've seen beneath you? Now imagine John Titus, principal of James River High School, dancing to beat it, wearing one white glove, sunglasses, and a red jacket. He reinforces an essential skill that all 21st century administrators should remember. That is, leaders must do what is best for children, even if it means getting their attention in ways that you never thought about.
Okay. Now let me share a story with you about a time when I got my feet wet in my early years of teaching and how I realized the true value of humility. Katie Harvey was a student in one of my regular level English 9 classes. She immediately struck me as one of those people who leads others without even realizing it. Everyone looked up to her, including to me, and she had an innate brilliance for English, but she never flaunted it. A few weeks into the first semester, I recognized that Katie should be in an honors level English class. At first, I didn't think I could do anything. What could a second year teacher really do in this situation? My first attempt to speak on her behalf didn't go well. I presented myself to her counselor who informed me that schedules were done and that Katie was where she was supposed to be. You know, no, no more questions. I viewed her as the great Oz and she had spoken. I asked Katie what she thought and she said, don't worry about it. I like this class. I like the people in it. I lived with her willingness to stay put for about another week before I made a bold decision. I walked into that counselor's office, feeling all proud of myself. I sat down and I said, I'm not leaving until you move this girl to honors English. I'm freaking out. She says, who do you think you are? I reiterated to her that I was not going to move until she made the change. Inside, I'm scared to death, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get fired. But finally, she got the point. She got up and she went into some other room and checked a file, came back in, sat down, wouldn't make eye contact with me, and said, the change will be made. What did the file say? I asked. That doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What did the file say? I asked again. She came from the gifted program, and obviously they made some sort of scheduling error on their part. No apologies. Katie's humble nature taught me so much. While I contend that humility is an essential quality, I also learned that it can be abused if it is not coupled with a pinch of self-confidence, and I stress a pinch. Katie was willing to remain in a class that was obviously a wrong fit for her because she did not want anyone to consider her a squeaky wheel. Without the self-confidence that I mustered, my humble nature almost allowed this to happen because I did not think I had the experience to make this kind of a change. By the same token, self-confidence needs a humble attitude. The counselor was confident in her desire to not make the change, but she was not humble enough to recognize that she could make mistakes. And when she did, when she did realize something was wrong, her pride did not allow her to admit it. Four years later, Katie graduated as the valedictorian of her class. The morning of her graduation, we met at Baker's Crest in Carytown, and we had breakfast together, and she was sharing her speech with me. She sat across from me, humble and self-confident as ever, and said, you know, if you hadn't changed my level, the GPAs were so close that if you hadn't changed my level, I wouldn't be making the speech today. One young lady can inspire a whole class. One counselor can change the destiny of a student. One teacher can realize that stepping on toes is sometimes the right thing to do. One person can make a difference. Today, right now, you are being handed the chance to figure out who you are. Are you ready? Please, please, please know that you can make a difference. But as you are trying to figure yourself out, as you are trying to understand what you can do, make sure that you do things for the right reasons. Recognize that a lot was accomplished in life, in leadership, in the center, before you got here. But we still want to hear how you can make a difference. We want to hear your voice. Good luck to all of you, and always be the best of who you are, no matter where you are.